Hi everyone and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to the next book in our Outlander reread, re-review, all the things. Um, I'm so excited. I read this book in the month of October. You're seeing this in December, I think, probably. Um, I'm pre-filming these so that I don't like forget what happened, but this is part of the series. If this is the first video you're coming across, I will link the series up there. This series includes a spoiler review and discussion for a book, and then it will compare that book to the season of the TV show of Outlander so we can have a discussion about comparing and contrasting those. So without further ado, let's jump into my review of Dragonfly in Amber, which was so much fun, guys. I love this so much. I took so many notes in this one. There's just marks all over this baby. And it was such a fun read. First off, let's talk about a couple trigger warnings, though. Um, this book, again, has scenes of rape in it, um, talks of sexual assault, um, there is some PTSD happening, um, for Jamie after what happened in the last book in the series, as well as, um, miscarriage. So just got to put those out there. Diana doesn't shy away from anything. Um, and I don't think we need to either, but you know, we got to put that out there because I don't want anyone to be surprised. Although if you're watching this, this is a spoiler review, so you probably already know. Um, but I mean, I watch reviews without reading the books all the time. So who knows? So the way we want to do this is I want to go over quick again, the backstory for me coming to this book, and then we will kind of dive into this. So first off, I think I've said this before. Um, one of the reasons it took me so long to get into the Outlander series is because when I was looking into reading it, I picked up the first book and the second book. And when I read the back of this book, it said 20 years later, Claire Randall. And I like dropped it like it was hot. I was like, what? It's been 20 years. What? Claire's not with Jamie, what's going on? I'm freaking out. And so I ended up like not picking the book up for a long time. Cause I was like, what is this love story where we're gonna meet these two people and then it's gonna be 20 years. And I just didn't understand. I didn't do any more research into it than that. So that's my fault, but that's what the situation was. Then once, you know, the rest of my journey happened where I started watching the TV show and then I picked up the book, I was like, okay, well, there's eight books in this series and I know that they get back together. So I'm just going to put myself into this book. So the first time through reading this book was after I'd watched the first season of the TV show, read the first book. And then, you know, we had a year and like a half to wait for the second season. Um, and that's really when I ended up reading the whole series was during that time. But I read Dragonfly and Amber and the first time through, was kind of a speed read, right? Where I feel the same way about like when you read New Moon for the first time and you're like, when is Edward gonna be back? I'm like, what's happening with Jamie? So I didn't really get to appreciate Roger and Brianna the first time that I read this book. So upon this reread, I obviously have much stronger feelings about Roger and Brianna now um, in regards to having read the whole series before. And so I really let myself enjoy it. And I will tell you, I certainly enjoy Roger Wakefield Mackenzie. He is so amazing. I love him. He's such a cool character. He's that kind of nerdy guy that like I would have a thing for. Um, I mean, we all have a thing for Jamie, but Roger's that more like realistic archetype, right? He's still got the Scottishness going, but he's very smart as well as still being, you know, many other qualities that he has as well. And he's amazing. Also, I really appreciated older Claire. I really appreciated the mystery of her. And when we don't understand like, you know, what had happened and just seeing her emotions when she goes to Clawden Field, when she finds Jamie's gravestone, when she sees Black Jack Randall's gravestone, all these things I never appreciated the first time because I was so angry and fearful about what was Diana doing to these people. And this time around, when you know everything's gonna work out, 
I was still able to just have a new love for Roger and Brie and older Claire. And I love that. I loved it so much. Next, the mystery and like the time differences that you get introduced to in the beginning where you know we have Brianna and you know that she's Jamie's because of what she looks like and because Claire tells us. But then that time discrepancy where at the end of Outlander, we knew that she was pregnant, but her and Jamie had only been together like the whole time Claire had been in the past had only been about eight months. And we find out that she was in the past for three years two and a half which of her being married to Jamie. So what happens to that baby? And it's just really getting to see the clues that Diana laid out and that she, you know, really had a good plan for this is just really cool to see. Um, And a lot of my notes are me, you know, marking down on those things. And it was pretty amazing. It was great. I love getting to pick up on those things. Um, also I let myself enjoy Paris a little more. Um, I'm still not a huge fan of Paris. We get introduced to a huge amount of characters, most of which we will only talk about like a little bit. Um, I feel like they mostly have more to do in some of Diana's like off shoot stories. Um, and I do plan in the next year, I want to read the rest of Diana's works leading up to, you know, the release of her ninth book which will hopefully be out in 2020. She said she's almost done writing it and then, but that's her part of it. And then it has to go through the process and everything. And so we get introduced to all of these characters who only a few of them end up having long lasting um, influence on us. So it just feels like we're going through a lot with these people that you do become quite attached to, but like we don't talk to them anymore. But let's talk about Mother Hildegard, who is one of my favorite characters. She's definitely worth the time. The Hopital, the, the Hopital de Sange, sorry, I'm not French, can't pronounce it, but the, Hopit- the hospital that Claire works at and the matron, Mother Hildegard, who we'll talk more about her in the movie adaptation because I really, that's the thing, or the TV adaptation. That's the thing too, is I was really trying to get a good sense of all the people because to me, this TV show is so tightly wound for me, just because that's what pushed me into these books. It's hard for me to, you know, disentangle and remember that this was written almost 30 years before we got, you know, that comparison of a TV show. Um, But I'll be honest, I'm not very good at that. Like I see the people from the TV show in it, but I just try to see if there's any characteristics that I'm missing out on, right? And I loved it. I loved it. I love it so much. Um, Yes, so there is a lot of painful parts in this book. Um, We, you know, losing faith. Jamie and Claire have many arguments. And granted, I mean, this is something they'll have forever. Like, we see their marriage over a very long period of time. And they're still so new. Like, that's a thing that's also weird for me is I've spent, quote, unquote, like, 30 years of marriage with these people um, and to see them at this new part where the weight of history, the weight of so many lives on Culloden Field is just resting on them and seeing them twist and crack under pressure and rebuild under pressure and losses, like the losses they suffer for effing Bonnie Prince Charlie is so painful. Like it, it hurts, it hurts so much. And you just want to scoop in and just like have them run away from it. But that's never something that James Frazier is going to do. He's never going to run from it. And the pain that this causes this, this couple, these true loves is truly heartbreaking and also beautiful. Like I have so many notes in here of just these beautiful speeches between the, mostly Jamie's, but between the two of them of just you really do get the feeling that this time travel, which is benign and yet the entire point of the story, really brought two soulmates together. And to me, that really is like what time travel means to them. It may, it can mean different things even within this story and for other characters we may or may not meet. But to me, it was always about Claire being brought to her soulmate. And out of a life of kind of just like monotonous to her true love. And it's amazing to me. It's so good. 
Um, Blackjack in this book, guys. Wow. He is so much more vicious. I feel that they've done it. They, I just, again, it's hard to divorce the character from the TV show. We're going to talk about him more in, um, you know, the next installment of this because the actor is so good, but he goes real nasty in this book in interactions we have with him. And some of them were just like, they turn your stomach to read them of just how he thinks that he has like won a place, you know, Jamie's never going to forget him. And it's hard because it's true and it's ugly but it's true. James Fraser is never going to forget Jonathan Randall. And Jonathan Randall, Blackjack, is so pleased with that, that he knows the intimate details of Jamie in only a way that Claire can. And the way that Blackjack thinks he has an equal right to those feelings as Claire does just makes you want that him to be a real person so you can kill him yourself and you know and we can't even have a clean revenge for Jamie because he's so tied up with Frank and even though he's not even though if we killed Blackjack Randall Frank would still be born because he's not Blackjack's son he's Alex and Mary's but Alex marries Blackjack to Mary on his deathbed so that Mary's son can have the benefits of being um, an officer's wife and that his son will have that honor. And it's, it's painful. It's painful too because in the book, one of the things, so this is, I'll just talk about this now. Like one of the things about this book, the biggest con for me is that Claire doesn't even think about if Frank is still a thing until we see Randall again because for all that they knew he was already dead and <coughs> nothing had happened to her and granted it's because he wasn't dead but for all she knows it was always going to work out the way it was going to work out then um which is generally the way that I end up feeling about Outlander time travel is that it's always meant to happen and so it always like will happen and it doesn't matter what you do um, the changes you make that change the future, like they were always going to happen. That's just how I view the time travel. And so to see, like, there's a scene in here where when Jamie, the first time he's going to challenge Blackjack to a duel, he's going to do it. And Claire, you know, stops him from happening. And she asks for a year um, because that's supposed to be the time that like Mary would be pregnant and then you could kill him. And she's like, and I'll help you kill him myself. Just give me this time. And Jamie is so distraught that she would choose Frank over him. And it's one of the few times that Frank gets in between their marriage. And whenever Frank gets in between their marriage, I get real mad because I don't care about Frank. There are no arguments for him in my point of view. I don't care. I think he's a, he ends up being a slimy human. And whether that happens because of the circumstances he gets put in or whether he chooses that, I don't care. He, I don't like him. That's just my opinion as a reader. You know, not that there aren't reasons for him and people feel bad for him sometimes. The things that he does to the people I love, just like emotional wise, makes me hate him. And then how he you know, treats Claire when she gets back, which again, whatever, there's reasons. I've heard all the reasons. I've been an Outlander fan for a long time. I've heard the reasons. It doesn't matter to me. I hate him. I just wish he was irrelevant. And his only redeeming quality <clears throat> is that he was a good father to Bree. But in him being a good father to Bree, we had to erase Jamie and we had to, um, you know, it was great. I don't know. There's so much wrapped up in it. And He's the thing that like just makes you so mad. And anyway, in that scene, when Jamie says, don't touch me, I think I've talked about this before. Maybe I haven't, but you guys know if you watch any of my other videos um, or recent videos of mine, um, physical touch is my love language. If you've never heard about love language. There's this book that's called The Five Love Languages. And definitely both Jamie and Claire are physical touch because they're able to communicate best when they're in the same space together, when they can touch each other, whether that's 
communication through actual the act of physical sex or just through you know touches and um being around each other is very important and at the end of that scene when jamie like gives her the blood oath that he'll wait he doesn't let her touch him and that always moments like that always just like cut me when someone's like don't touch me and it's so hard and of course because jamie is the king of men he comes around to it and he reminds Claire, like, I've saved your life just as many times as you saved mine. And though I hate Frank and I hate him so much, I need him to be alive because we may, you know, this endeavor to stop Culloden may fail and I need him to be there on the other side of time for you. And it's such foreshadowing and we know that it's a thing because as we're reading along, we know that she does end up going back and we don't know why. And so that... um brings up the final point that I want to make. <laughs> We're not quite done yet, but the final point I want to make in the ticking clock we feel. Because we know that three-year time is coming and we know that she'll be pregnant when that happens and we know that Culloden still happens because all of these things get set up in part one. And Diana's amazing. She uses Chekhov's gun like no one I've ever seen. And honestly, in time travel stories, no one gets to use Chekhov's gun the way that an author does in those scenarios because when you've set things already, you know they're going to play out. And the desperation in the last like fourth of this book, as we the readers know, there's no hope that these two will stay together. And as we the readers know that Culloden has happened, will happen, and is like is going to happen, has happened, and will happen now. Um, there's just a devastation that comes with it. it. It hurts, it's painful, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. And the final scene of Jamie and Claire together, when they have, you know, when they make love one more time and when it all happens, hold on, let me find it because I want to actually say something about it. Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry, guys. I'm going to do it. So he's going to send her back. And he tells her that she's pregnant, and um, which she didn't even notice, but he did because he's a horse breeder and he or trainer and he knows. And he says this, sorry, I can't do a Scottish accent, but you'll thank me for it. Claire, he said quietly, tomorrow I will die. And this child is all that will be left of me, ever. I ask you, Claire, I beg you to see it safe. And she says that she will. And then he says this, I will find you, he whispered in my ear. I promise if I must endure 200 years of purgatory, 200 years without you, then that is my punishment, which I have earned for my crimes. For I have lived and killed and stolen, betrayed and broken trust. But there is one thing that shall lie in the balance when I shall stand before God. I shall say one thing to him to weigh against the rest. Lord, you gave me a rare woman and God, I loved her well. And I wrote in my notes, I'm sorry, I love books. I love books. I wrote, that's love to last them for 20 years. Um, and he, they, they mark each other's hands, which is something we'll talk about later. And then um, they say goodbye and they do their wedding vows again. Um, blood of my blood and bone of my bone, so long as we both shall live. And he says longer than that because he thinks he'll die. And then he says um, to tell Frank that he's grateful and that he trusts him because he must and that he hates him to the marrow of his bones. And I love that about Jamie. And it's something about Jamie that I feel like Frank doesn't give back um, and would have made me respect him a little bit more is that Jamie gave him a gift because um, we don't know at this time Frank can't have children and that's why they hadn't had a child together even though they'd been married seven years and he gets a child and he loves that child and again like I said that's his redeeming factor that he's a great father but he didn't do Jamie the honor that Jamie gave him by acknowledging him and knowing that he was giving him a gift and um that's just something I won't forgive Frank for. But it's beautiful writing. Um, sorry that I have to get so dramatic and cry about things. But <clears throat> Outlander, 
now it's just my throat. I'm not actually crying. Outlander is very special to me. And Dragonfly and Amber, I always thought was my least favorite book. And now I don't know. So I'm excited about this reread. There doesn't need to be a least favorite. That's what I'm saying. I just remember it being my least favorite because of that pain. And I think also being a little older and understanding bittersweetness just a little better, I can appreciate <clears throat> this book for that um, and for things not needing to be neat and perfect. But this is, of course, five stars. Like, I'm not really rating these. The series, they're all going to be five stars. Um, but this is a worthy addition into the series. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Please, this is a spoiler review. This is fun. We'll talk about the parts you love, the parts you hated. Um, talk about scenes that made you cry, what was really hard for you to read, anything down below. I'm so excited to chat with you. And in two weeks, there will be the comparison video, um, which I'm going to film right now, um, comparing um, this to the second season of the TV show. So I hope you'll check that out. Um, I make new videos every Monday and Thursday and sometimes Saturdays. Um, thank you so much for joining me and you can watch some more videos right now. Bye.